我今天怀抱着无比振奋的心情，郑重的跟全国父老乡亲报告，我参选二零二四总统的搭档人选，就是中华民国台湾驻美代表肖美琴大使。二零二三年十一月二十一日，台湾大选倒数五十四天。民进党总统参选人赖清德今天二十日宣布副手为萧美琴。民进党总统参选人赖清德，我今天怀抱着无比振奋的心情，郑重的跟全国父老乡亲报告，我参选二零二四总统的搭档人选就是中华民国台湾驻美代表萧美琴大使。民进党副总统参选人萧美琴，我是萧美琴，我回来了，挺台湾我责无旁贷。至于中共国台办口出恶言称赖萧所谓独上加独，赖清德之言。中共对台湾选举说三道四，证明中共借选。对于未经历民主洗礼的中共官员，没有必要回复。我是肖美琴，我回来了。过去这几年，在美国上架台湾，是蔡总统赋予我的任务，也是我一直自己认为最佳的战斗位置。我在这个位置上全力以赴，也不敢懈怠。在过去这三年又四个月的日子当中，我和整个驻美代表处的团队努力，让台美关系的运作更加的顺畅，也尽力完成总统和台湾人民交付给我的责任。所以，当赖副总统邀请我担任副手的时候。我也陷入长考，在这场选战当中，我应该要留在最熟悉的战斗位置，还是要在新的位置上迎接更高难度的挑战？我还记得二零一零年，我一样面临非常困难的抉择，前往花莲投入立委的补选，也开启了我在花莲长达十年的耕耘。十年的岁月当中，我上山下田。脚步走遍花莲的大街小巷，虽然面临极度艰困的政治环境，但是也感受到花莲基层的温暖。在最接近土地的地方，多年的汗水与历练成为我成长的养分。多年的美好与挫折，以及二零二零年落选的时候。支持者为我留下不舍的眼泪，都成就了我面向世界的勇气。我常形容自己是战猫，刚刚也跟赖副总统说，这里为什么都是狗没有猫，只有一只猫。因为我觉得外交就如同猫的步伐，在踏出每一步都要小心翼翼，时而轻柔，但也坚定。在驻美期间，我坚守立场，妥善处理议题。在复杂的战略环境当中维持平衡，将台美关系最大化，也让其他理念相近的国家更支持台湾，支持台湾的国际参与。但在俄乌战争之后，台海局势再一次引起国际的关注。尽管全世界都希望维持现状，但台海现状正不断地遭到对岸片面的改变。共机共建侵扰介入选举，这段日子以来，台湾政治情势的变化，我相信大家都深有所感，也都非常焦虑。台湾能不能守住民主价值？台湾人能不能自己决定未来？不只对台湾自己，对全世界来说都有深远的影响。而这些情势的变化，也让我对眼前困难的挑战知道，我已没有回避的空间。今天上午，我已经分别向蔡英文总统和吴钊燮部长请辞驻美大使的职务，全心投入总统的选战。我会带着过去每一个位置、每一个岗位上的历练，以及对国家的使命，为台湾做更多。为台湾人民走更远，谢谢赖副总统，以及许多台湾人民对我的信任，愿意在我的肩膀上托付更沉重的责任，也谢谢蔡总统给我的鼓励和祝福。我是肖美琴，我回来了，挺台湾，我责无旁贷，为着咱的国家，我会了落，咱做伙拍平。谢谢大家。
Thank you, uh, Karen, for that kind introduction. And also thank you uh, to the Honorable um, Chair uh, Stuart Adams for hosting uh, this wonderful event here in the great state of Utah. Uh, I'm so honored uh, to be able to be here in person to use this occasion, express my gratitude uh, to so many of you, to ALEC, and to the so many outstanding freedom-loving legislators around the United States for your friendship and support for the bilateral relationship with my country, Taiwan. And there are a number of specific items that I do want to highlight in terms of our gratitude to all of you. First of all, I want to thank ALEC for awarding my president, Tsai Ing-wen, with the International Pioneer Award for Leadership, highlighting her commitment to free markets and also to fighting for democracy. I think this is an honor not only for the president of Taiwan, but it is also recognition of the freedom-loving people of Taiwan and our determination to keep Taiwan free. I often say that you are living in the land of the free. We are living on the island of the free. I also want to thank Alec for including in your model policy last year the agenda of supporting a bilateral trade agreement with Taiwan. Bilateral trade with Taiwan is in the interests of both our countries. For us, it will help us diversify from over-dependence on the Chinese economy. I think this necessity has been highlighted, especially during COVID, where very often we are vulnerable to dependencies on China, whether it's on the provision of PPEs or for other supplies that go into our pharmaceutical and medical device supply chain. What we want to do is work among like-minded democracies that share the respect for international property rights and playing by global rules and scientific standards. Mainly, we also believe that is, it is only in societies that respect the freedom of speech where true innovation can propel technology that advances human progress instead of technology that is abused and used for surveillance and controlling their people. So in the spirit of thanking you, for supporting the relationship in trade and economic ties with Taiwan through your model policy. I also want to thank the many of you who have signed up on the letter outside uh, addressing the White House in advancing that appeal to take action in supporting trade with like-minded democracies like Taiwan. I also want to thank many of you who have passed resolutions in the various state legislatures in support of the friendship and partnership with Taiwan. Now, I'm an ambassador now. I work in Washington, D.C., but I used to be like you. I came from a legislature in Taiwan. I understand that all politics are local. And when we go back to our constituents, we want to deliver on economic progress. We want to deliver on the common values that we share. And I want to say that although Taiwan, you know, we're in the state of Utah now, our size is only about 15% the size of Utah. But we are the eighth largest consumer of American agricultural products in the world. <laughs> Which means per capita wise, each Taiwanese citizen is the second largest consumer per capita wise of American agricultural products, just second to Canada. So we love American agricultural products. We also love American technology that is based on ingenuity and innovation in an environment of freedom. 
We are also fans, and of course, we depend also on American energy exports uh, that help propel our economy and our industry. So this is a bilateral partnership that reinforces our strengths, and we help each other. Let me give you another concrete example. We just heard from the Senate president from the state of Arizona. Now, Taiwan's semiconductor company, TSMC, is now working on a $12 billion investment in Arizona to produce semiconductor chips. In recent decades, Taiwan has purchased high-end manufacturing equipment from the United States, and we've used that equipment to make chips in Taiwan, which we sell to your auto industry suppliers. Your automakers make the cars and sell them back to Taiwan. So isn't this a mutually beneficial and reinforcing partnership? And it would be even better <laughs> if we could ensure that in Taiwan, as we are a freedom-loving society, we keep Taiwan as a democracy. So in addition to supporting our trade, thank you, partnership, I want to thank so many of you for also supporting the defense partnership as well as the political relationship that is based on our common values of freedom and democracy, as well as our common interests in ensuring the peace and stability of the Indo-Pacific region, as well as the prosperity of both our economies. Taiwan stands on the front line of confronting the Communist Party of China. We are under daily coercion on the political level, economic level, as well as militarily. And the United States has always been the most reliable friend and partner of Taiwan as we are confronting coercion from the CCP. You know, when I first started out in politics, Taiwan was just holding our very first ever presidential election, and that was in 1996. And China responded to our very first election by firing missiles against Taiwan. They have a very low anger threshold. They tend to be upset about everything we do, about our existence, about beating their athletes in the Olympics. But I think what's most important is that we work together to preserve our democracy. It's not only important for the people of Taiwan, it is important for all the freedom-loving people in the world because the Chinese Communist Party has a narrative. They claim that democracy is not suitable for Asian people. That is a lie, that is false, and Taiwan is living proof of that. So thank you again for your steadfast support for Taiwan, and we look forward to working with all of the state legislatures on continuing to advance our economic partnership in so many ways. We also look forward to working with you on educational exchanges for all the young people of your schools and your universities around the United States who are questioning the presence of the Confucian Institutes and the way the Chinese government exercises censorship and surveillance on their students. Taiwan is your best alternative for learning the Chinese language in an environment where the young people can exercise their full freedom and tweet whatever they want without the risk of going to jail. So we have a lot of work to do, and thank you again to Alec and such strong enthusiasm for this partnership that continues to be so meaningful for democracy, for freedom, for our values, as well as for our interests. Thank you again.